This is section 1.1, and today we're going to be doing a lot of the vocab in, ge in geometry. Today is not actually going to involve any math per se, but we have to learn all these terms and how to draw them so that we can talk about geometry for the rest of the school year. So the first word we're going to talk about is a point, and I think if I asked anybody to draw a point, you guys would all draw a dot, which is great. That's what it is. And then in geometry, we're going to add a letter to it. It needs to be a capital letter, so I'm going to use D. Um, and the definition of a point, really, it has no dimension. You know how we talk about like 3D movies. Um, points have a no dimension because they have no depth or width. They're just, they just kind of exist as a location. So the notation that we use or like how we name it, we would say this is point D. Like this would be point A or point B. So when we're talking about things we wanna be able to talk or to use the right vocab, and this one's called a point. It's always a capital letter. Next up, we've got a line. If I asked anybody to draw them, you guys would totally draw it like this. And then it, it, it actually is one dimension since it goes in um, one direction forever. Well, both directions forever, but it has one dimension because it just has a length that doesn't have width, okay? Um, it's usually represented by a line. It's got, or sorry, by drawing a line. It's got to have arrows on both ends. That's what makes it a line. It has to continue in both directions forever. When we name it, there are a couple of different ways to do that. Um, so right at the end of here, they put a lowercase. It's tough to read, but that is a cursive L. And the reason they use that um, at the end of a line is you will often see at the end of a line just a small lowercase letter and it helps us name lines. So we've got some options when we are naming a line. First of all, you could say that this is just line L. So you could go to the end, pick out the lowercase letter and just name it that way. You could also say that this is line AB and you don't have to use the word line, but above it, you're going to write or draw a line so that we all know that you're talking about the line with arrows from A to B. And uh, the order of the letters does not matter for lines, so we could also have said BA. Still have to have <clears throat> the line on top with arrows at both ends because we are talking about a line and that goes on forever. So you're pretty much just mimicking what you see, two arrows above your letters, two arrows. Next up is a segment. And the difference here between a line and a segment is there are no arrows. They have two endpoints. It ends here and it ends here. So there are stops on a segment. So the way that you would uh, write the notation for that is you would still use A and B, but instead of having a line that's got arrows, you're gonna draw one and it has no arrows. Or you can put dots on it, just so that everybody knows that this is a segment. So you could have written it like that, or you could have said BA. I'll do this one without the dots, just so that you know it can be written both ways, that it doesn't matter um, whether or not you add the dots or don't add the dots. Next up, we've got a ray. Now the difference between this picture and that one is it's got, this one had two endpoints. This one's got an endpoint, and I know that kind of looks like it, but it doesn't stop there, it keeps going. So it starts at a place and it goes forever, but only in one direction. So it's kind of like half of a line almost. So rays, when you name them, um, you wanna start where the dot is. So we'll start with A and then B. And when we draw the thing above it, we really just wanna mimic this picture. So we have a dot at A, and we have an arrow on the end where B is. So it's gonna be like that. If you chose to write the letters backwards, then your ray has to go backwards. The dot has to be above the letter that has the dot, and the arrow has to be with the one that's got an arrow. Next, next we've got opposite rays. Okay, so these are just two rays. Um, two rays share an endpoint. So it's kind of like they meet in the middle and then they just go in opposite directions. So C is in the middle. So we're talking about this ray from C to B, and then we're talking about this ray from C to A. So it's just these two that are going in opposite directions and they share their starting place. So the how we would name them in this case is we would do C to B, dot on C, arrow on B, and then we also have C to A. And I can write C to A with dot on C and arrow on A. 
So you can draw it like that. I could have also done for this one, I could have done AC, just as long as my dot is above C and my arrow is above A. So these are actually the same, even though it looks like they're backwards, but this is just completely flipped to make that. Next up, we've got a plane, and not the kind that are in the air. This is a plane that we talk about in geometry. So a plane actually has two dimensions. It's 2D, and we usually see it like this shape. We usually see it like a parallelogram or like a tilted sheet of paper. That's usually how they're drawn. And it's really a plane is just any flat surface. So that could be the ceiling, that could be the floor, any wall you see is a plane. Any flat surface, two-dimensional, is a plane. Now the way that you name these, they get a little crazy, um, the notation about how to name them. You can either use three uppercase letters, so capital, oops, cap, oops, capital. So you could say this is plain A, B, C. And the order doesn't matter, so you could have done BCA, it doesn't matter. You just pick out three. Or you can use the one bold letter. So if I look at this plane, these three are points. They definitely have their dot and they have a letter right next to them. And then M is this weirdo off to the side. It actually looks bolder than these ones. Like it used a different font than these three. And it's in the corner and it doesn't have a dot. So I could also say that this is plain M and just be done. I don't have to come up with three letters. Two more words, co-linear, it's kind of right in the title. Co means together, all on the line. So it's just points on the same line. And coplanar would be the same thing, so it's just points on the same plane. There's not really notation for that. Um, collinear would literally just be, you know, points on the same line. And then coplanar would just be like this picture, how A, B, and C, they're on the same plane, they're coplanar. Not really notation for that, it's more like a vocab word. Let's do some naming, let's try it, let's practice all we just figured out. So the first one says give two other names for line PQ, here's PQ. Well, your easy one is just to flip-flop them because I could write it as QP. And then go to the end of QP and look for your lowercase letter. That would be your other option, line N. Number two says give two other names for plane R. So plane R is right here. This is that bold letter in the corner. It has no dot, so it's not a point. That's the name of the plane. Or, hopefully I filled this in for you, but that's a P, that's a T, that's a Q. Or we could say plane... And I just have to pick out three letters that are in this, I'm sorry, three points that are in this plane. M is also not a point. It does not have a dot. It is not capitalized. No bueno. So I could do SVP. Or I could do TPV. Plane TPV. The, the trick here is, is they cannot be on a line. They cannot be collinear. That's why I could not say SPT. SPT would not work. Next one says name three points that are collinear. Well, we just answered that S, P, and T. They're all on the same line. That was easy. Name four points that are coplanar. So I just need points that lie on this plane. So V, S, P, and T. The reason I can't pick Q is it's kind of up in the air. So all the things that are on this gray plane. They're all kind of like on the sheet of paper. And then Q is on this line that's like shooting right through this piece of paper and it's kind of up in the air. So Q is not even on that plane. Then we have some intersections. What happens when two things hit? So when two lines intersect, they create a point. So two lines hit, boom, they make a point right there. When two planes intersect, so I'm talking about two sheets of paper. I'm talking about when the ceiling hits the floor, what does it make? Or when the wall hits the ceiling, what does it make? And it creates this whole space. It actually creates a line. <clears throat> so here we're going to name some intersections. So we're going to name the intersection of PQ. Here's PQ. Just tracing it. 
that line right there, and line K right there. So when those two hit each other, sorry, my lights just went out, they hit at point M. Whoops, that's not how you spell point. Oh my word. Point M. Next up, it says the intersection of plane A and plane B. So plane A is right here. It's kind of the flat horizontal one. Plane B is the one that's standing up. And when two planes hit, we just talked about it, they make a line. So I just have to figure out where they hit each other, and it's right there. So it's line K. That should look lowercase, by the way. I don't know if it does to you. Should be a lowercase k. Name the intersection of line K, got it, and plane A. That's interesting because we didn't talk about that on the last page. So the plane is right here, and K is like already on it. So they don't really intersect at all. K just lays on plane A. So it's just line K. That's where they intersect. All of line K they touch. A little bit of naming practice. This is usually the part kids struggle on the most is being able to name things. Um, or to be able to talk about them. So which is the correct way to name a line? Um, it's not like this is bad, but we just only like there to be two letters. Next up, uh, using that same idea, I should see two letters when you are naming a line, so that won't work. You either are gonna say line, and then you're gonna say like the little letter, or you give me two letters with the line above it. So that is the right choice. We don't want to combine line and then two points. So either you use the lowercase or just the points. Number two, it says match the correct notation with the vocab word. So segment, remember that ends. So dots and dots, so that would be this guy. Array starts and then goes in one direction, so that would be this one. And a line goes forever in both directions, so it would be the middle one. Couple drawing practices, we're just gonna use what we have talked about and see if we can draw it. So first one says, can we draw CD intersecting a plane? Wow, so that's a line, that's a plane. So I'm gonna start with the plane, that's the bigger object. And FGH, they're just telling me some points, so I've got an F, a G, and an H. And then they want me to draw this line so that it hits this plane at point G. Okay, so I don't really need those other two. Um, and they want it to intersect, which means it's gotta like go through it. So I'm gonna go like that. And then I'm gonna dot it like it's behind the paper, like it's below it and we can't see it. And then I'm just gonna let it keep going. So it's kinda like this pencil comes up through the piece of paper, bam, pushes right through at G and pokes through the paper. And then we just need a C and a D on there. So I'll put a D there and I'll put a C there. Next up it says, can you draw FG, that's a ray, there's only one arrow, and LK, that has no arrows, so that's a segment, on the same plane. Okay, so we need a plane again. FG is a ray, F to G, and L to K. Boom. Next it says, can you draw three collinear points? I sure can. A, B, C. That does not count. In order for them to be collinear, you have to draw a line that connects them all with arrows. So that's just our first tiptoe into geometry. It's a lot of vocab, like I said, not really any math today, but learning this notation and learning how to draw them is super important. So give that a try.